You're listening to Oppositional Forces. Bad guys for good reasons. Hey, welcome everybody to Oppositional Forces. I am your host, Scotty, currently in Facebook jail. Don't. <laughs> and with me today is the ever lovely last Jotun of the Frozen North, Mr. Frost. Say what's up. <sighs> What's up? And welcome to another exciting edition of the Smoke Pit. <laughs> Just to kind of recap, the Smoke Pit is a very loose, uh, like non-subject driven episode uh, where uh, oftentimes Marines would congregate in what we refer to as the Smoke Pit or smoking area, uh, where we would get to BS with each other and live the... Live the life of disgruntled, the you know. Water cooler. Yeah, water cooler, uh, you know, the... The coffee. The coffee pot, whatever. you know, conversations, whatever. You know, the, the the quilting circle, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> the, yeah. the quilting circle. The, the, the <laughs> there's there's society, a lot maybe. of people listening to us that's <laughs> like, oh, that's very relatable. Yeah. The quilting circle. I know all about that. We gossip all day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the hands in the hen house. Yeah, whatever. Uh, so, um, I'm in Facebook jail <laughs> and it's my first time in Facebook jail. And he's butthurt about it. It's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny. Welcome to the dark side. On the left, we have straight jackets. On the right, we have cookies. Mmm, cookies. Uh, as long as it's uh chocolate chip and Xanax, I'm in. No, no. Usually they're the kind that look like chocolate, chocolate chips, but they're actually like just regular cookies and raisins burnt raisins with mm. with weed in it <laughs> with weed. and a few drops of lsd mm, no we just Ugh. we just forget to tell everybody that those additives are in them see and th that's why the rest of you freaks should stay in facebook jail hey don't kink shame <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i i, I opened my phone uh, trying to look at some stuff and I went to comment. No, I went to just like somebody's comment on one of my posts and sure enough, it, I get slapped with the, uh, Oh no, you can't say nothing or comment or post for 24 hours. Now <laughs> 24 hours ain't bad. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I'm not going to lose a whole bunch of sleep over 24 hours, but it's 24 hours to the minute. The problem I'm having is because we run a business here <laughs> and we're trying to reach people. I cannot advertise <laughs> or manage groups or to me. include op four. I can't either for now. 60 days. Yeah, I can't either now. <sighs> I'm really feeling my feelings on this one, see, but see, see you affected me too. So just saying, don't start with me because you, <laughs> you pull this crap all the time. About every 60 days. I get, you I get would make the jail. devil blush if he was scrolling through your timeline and be like, Ooh, too much. Mr. Frost too much. Right. right. They're, they're trying, they're trying to figure out how to build a wing in, <sighs> in, in hell for me, dude. It's like, I, I get it, all right? And I'm not going to go all like, mm, ever, someone's after me. But, it, I mean, it, it does legitimately look like someone or someone's, like, went through like purposely. the last several months of my posts and, like, henpecked, you know, the, the one or two off-color things that I've said. Like... I'm usually pretty cognizant of what I say and the fact that I've one or two of these can be like very vaguely construed as like maybe a call to violence or like, <laughs> really? or inciting. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. So dude, TikTokers aren't even real people. Ouch. If I say, well, you know, it's, it's like being famous on, on Facebook. You, you're either the driver or the, the main window liquor on the freaking bu short bus. I mean, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. You're but Facebook see, fam famous or TikTok famous. Yeah. I drive. Yeah. Cool. I drive the bus. You would never ever as a regular person 
without, you know, the, the kind of demented darker side uh, that comes along with just like unregulated, like uh, malice towards humanity. Would you go around and just open all the fences and and the and remove cattle guards and stuff so that you know people's herds and livestock and horses and everything could come you know come out and that's what that's what i commented on i was like because apparently this is like a tiktok trend that people are running around and videoing themselves uh committing crime and you know releasing people's animals Bad guys for good reasons. Yeah, but that's not a good reason, and that's why no, I, I said, like, I like all agree. my comment was, shoot them like like a country slang, like shoot them TikTokers on sight, like. Right, you can. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, it's it's like the sign posting on your property of like, you'd have better chance of leaving this property if you went into bear country wearing meat underwear, like. <laughs> I get it. I yeah. get I get your point of view, but there's some sensitive folks out there. And then I, I sh- in June, I shared a picture of what is Peter Griffin from Family Guy, who's been like photoshopped to look like a cartoon version of uh, what's his name, Gross Cruz. I don't know. Uh, it's Gross. His last name's Gross Cruz from the Kyle Rittenhouse case, getting his bicep blown off. But it's it's like Peter Griffin sitting there like holding his knee, but now it's been photoshopped, so it looks like he's holding a pistol, and half his bicep is blown away. (laughs) Probably, probably not my best, (laughs) not my best moment to share that. You're like, well, you know, yeah. If if you amongst friends, that would be different. But I don't know if that one even was public. Well, and that's kind of like what's rubbing have, me the wrong way. And we have a traitor amongst us. <laughs> well, I dare not say anything because who knows? Maybe there's like Spotify jail or Apple podcast jail. Well, and that would be, that would, uh, uh, I, I don't want to end up in those jails. Know, I won't, I won't speak on this, but yeah. Cause you know, like in Twitter, if you dead name someone or if you state, you know, factual, things about uh, biology and the human condition then you get you know you get shadow banned or you get banned outright and totally deplatformed so I, I don't play those games we don't politic here and that's the thing is like I, I don't yeah I don't know I politic a little bit on my Facebook but it's, a, 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 well it's because I'm a libertarian and right, if I don't no, have I some get, outlet I, I get I get it to get spit it. some libertarian principles right. at people and remind right. them how absolutely foolish they are for doing ridiculous things like paying taxes and <laughs> well, taxation <laughs> is theft regardless it, it, of it the, is of until the they they made it a constitutional amendment that said that they can and then in, and even then, I it's still it's still just because you put it on the paper doesn't make it right. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, now I'll, I'll climb off my soapbox because that's not what I wanted to talk about today. Um, Wednesday of this week, you and I are going to Vegas, starting at one p.m. Sin City uh, for the smell of vomit, alcohol, and. What else does it smell like when we roll in there? It's like the smell when you roll in. You know you're in Vegas. Vomit, rotten food, and alcohol. (laughs) That that is not a joke. (laughs) During the day, heat of the sun. Oh, yeah. You cannot tell me that it's No, it's it's rotten food from the dumpsters because they throw away, I think, like 65% of all the food that's prepared. Right. Um, You know, because there's so many buffets and stuff like that. Uh, it's rotting food, so you get that sweet, nasty. That's not sweet. Dumpster yeah, smell, yeah, like the sickening sweet. You right. know, you know what I'm right. talking about. I know. I know. Um, and then, yeah, like the smell of uh, vomit. Yeah, di- different fluids, different vomit, kinds of. Piss, yeah, shit. it's Vegas is a very. <laughs> but, no offense. I, I love and hate Vegas. And, 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 yeah. Anybody who lives there, like I respect you and I know, you know there's a lot of Move. things, <laughs> <laughs> right? but I, I, this is not a place for me. 
No. Like I like to play the lottery as as Scotty hates that I do, but um I I don't really care to gamble anymore because I have to sit in that space and I can't I can't. Yeah. I just can't because <clears throat> I smell that smell, even though I'm a smoker, soon to be non smoker. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, I have to smell that smell. And I can't I I can't. Yeah. And then all the homelessness between it's like it drifts from California into Vegas and then you have all the homelessness that is in Vegas. Like oh and it's sad that people are homeless. Don't get me wrong. I'm not bad mouthing that. I'm bad mouthing that houselessness. Yeah, the houselessness. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm not PC. But you're gonna get a shadow ban. Right. <laughs> but my point is, is like you can you can now shit in the middle of a sidewalk in California and nobody cares. Like, just don't step in it. Like, that's that's disgusting. That's why we have bathrooms. We have enough porta potties throughout the world. In California alone, I'm sure that they could. They want to do something about homelessness and a lot of that stuff. Start putting needle collection bins out, and start putting porta potties out. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's that simple. It, it's already a safe haven place. At least give them somewhere to go. Yeah, please. It's got to be cheaper than paying, you know, people to go out in hazmat suits to clean up feces off the floor. And needles. And needles. And yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> in Vegas, uh, and I mean, we're all, the reason that I hate on Vegas so much is I, I've lived two hours from Vegas for the last decade uh, on and off uh, down here in southern Utah. And Vegas, it's just kind of lost its luster. You know, you spend enough time around it and you realize it's not just party buses, you know, expensive drinks, clubs, you know, gambling, you know, hooting and hollering with your friends. It's your friend gets lost and is crying on the phone and I don't know where I am. I'm in front of the. The room number, right. like, yeah, you could be in any one of the 30 high-rise hotels here. Right. Yeah. What, what what's the color of the carpet? carpet? Yeah. What's the See, color you've of the done carpet? this. Yes. You've done this. I, I have been that, not crying, but I have been that. Oh, okay. Like, sure. Yeah. Well, maybe crying. <laughs> but I've been standing and pounding on the door like the police. <laughs> and I lost my key. And then realizing I'm in. The, the wrong, wrong hotel yeah. completely on the other side of the strip. It's just not a particularly safe place uh, to be inebriated, but that's exactly what you can do on every corner. You can drink on the strip and carry your openly. Yeah. yeah. As long, I think as long as it's not a glass container. Right. So that like they sell all the, the big long plastic the yards. Yeah. yeah. And so we're going to Vegas. <laughs> it's a really long Long rant about how uh, we're going to the IPSB uh, convention. That's the International Protective Security Board Close Protection Conference. Or yeah, yeah, I got it all right. Right, it's a mouthful. Right, uh, but tis. I'll give you a mouthful. <laughs> Welcome to tis. the smoke pit. Welcome to the smoke pit. Uh, uh, yeah, so as the, uh, so as he said before, this is the unadulterated version where I. He can't keep that tight leash on me in the muzzle because it's the smoke pit. However, right. However, we don't I want it to be, be the period at the end of every sentence. Yes, I know. But I mean, you do you. It's the smoke pit. So um, as is the industry that we work in, uh, which is physical security and executive protection and all of these different uh, facets that uh, surround that, that encompass, uh, you know, different elements. Um, this is kind of the opportunity for uh, everybody to congregate in one place and discuss what's new, what's cutting edge, what people are seeing out in the field, what problems they're having, ways that they've solved it. Some training involved. With training, them. continuing education, and networking. Networking, networking. Networking, and then everybody measures their dick too. 
I, <laughs> I think that in every industry, there's always something like this, right? There's always the, the medical conferences or the education conferences, uh, you know, lawyers and I mean, everybody does it right. I, I'm, I'm sure for any, any, any solid industry, there's a conference, you know, where people congregate and do such things. Conference, convention, whatever you want to call it. Exactly. And so, uh, you know, when we get everybody together like this, if you're not taking advantage of the time that you're there to meet people, to shake hands, to make connections, to pass out business cards. Something that we don't have as I look at him <laughs> that we talked about like six months ago and we forgot. I bet we could same day some cards. Yeah. At Kinko's actually. Or yeah. FedEx. Yeah. I'm sure. We, we just get some like, you know, some basic. We could go 50 and 50. Yeah. A hundred cards for like 60 bucks, I think. Yeah. I ain't worried about it. Um, so we have a day to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. It's 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 like me just realizing that I forgot to take my stuff to the cleaners. So yeah, <laughs> I'll be doing that tomorrow too. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can overnight clean your stuff. Can you? Can you do suits? And well, if not, I guess I'm wearing just button up freaking pearl button shirts with <laughs> jeans and a sports coat. Nah, well, yeah, we'll feel our way through. Actually, I think that's what... If Eric and Zach yeah, and everyone's yeah, running yeah, around in that's, jeans and... That's what I'm doing anyways. <laughs> Screw it. Screw it. I will be the least professional person there. It's be, If I had a choice, it'd be Silkies anyways. Yeah. And, well, I mean... And, and we do have a business, so I, I will be respectful of that. But had not Op4 been a part of something, I would probably run around in Silkies in some kind of offensive t-shirt. Well, and remember, like we're the black sheep of the community anyway. This is like true. we're we're not out there, you know, making making the big waves and making the big deals. Like we we swing in to do like the the dirty work. <laughs> you know, we're the garbage <laughs> man. You know, for the well, we're not the garbage man, but we are. Hey, the, garbage man makes good money, right? But I I am gonna say we are the go to. Yeah, it is one of those. Hey, in a pinch, will you will you? Come and help me out with this. Right. Even, even though, yeah. I'm not taking six month gigs in, you know, uh, Dubai or, right. or Germany or something like that. Although, anybody who's listening, I I will go to Europe. I will go to one of those details. Gotta get certified. I, I'll, I'll get my cards. I'll, I'll, you gotta go to the for, UK. For the right money, I will get vaccinated. That. Is how Ooh. serious I am about mm. that. Okay, that's how serious I'm about that. All right, have fun. I'm, a, I'm about that life. <laughs> I'm about that life. Enjoy your myocarditis. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. That's a joke, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Laugh. <laughs> yeah. uh, so let's talk about uh, some of the types of uh, some of the types of work that gets done by the people who are going to be uh, at this conference. Uh, of course, the big one is EP, executive protection. Mr. Frost, tell me about executive protection. Executive protection is a title. It's not necessarily, I mean, for the most part, executive. So meaning somebody important. Sometimes that could be a CEO of a business that has been, you know, the board of directors has said, hey, We've had some threats against you because we're involved with some litigation and some, we're, we're chopping down some, some trees in a forest and some people have gotten pretty upset about it and wish to do you harm. Oh, I'm all right, says the CEO. I'm good. I'm good. I live out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you're still going to have two guys around the clock drive you to and from they're going to check in with our own house security, but we're going to hire two guys to essentially be your chauffeur and just make your sh make sure you're safe. Or, you know, when people think of bodyguards, that's exactly what executive protection is. Right. So you see the movie stars or you see the, the, the music artists or, you know, Whatever, somebody who's the expensive high, types. Yeah, you know, the Kardashians, mm -hmm. things like that. That you know And all their silver spoon kids. Oh god. 
Anyways, I won't speak ill of that because that's where our money comes from. Yeah. But, but no, I carry no. bags. Yeah, I'll go get coffee and carry bags. I, yep. I don't care. I'll drive, shut my mouth, you know, right. carry bags, you know. I'll clean up somebody's mess afterward. Like, I don't care. Right. Pay me. Pay me. It's all about the money. Um, and I'll do it with a smile, to be honest with you. Um, I may bitch about it once I get back to the team house or the hotel or something like that. But it's probably to somebody else of like, oh, they're on one. Be aware. <laughs> like, <laughs> my shoelaces weren't tied right and the wife had a fit. Right. So your shoelaces need to be tied this way. Mm-hmm. Because you can get fired drop of a hat oh yeah bring bring them the washington post instead of the new york times and see how long you last you know for the people who are really particular right there's a there's a lot of things to that and then in the ep world you have your contract security as well where it might be a paul blart situation where you're residential security you you may be working with some rent-a-cops i mean technically you know that that type of uniform security alongside with them, but they're making $9 an hour and we're making 35 to $65 an hour doing the exact same thing. Yep. It's a, it's the who you know and who you trained with. Right. A lot of that is in the certifications that you have and who you network with. Yep. And to, you know, you want to make money? I can watch, I can go to California and watch closed caption TV on properties and make $25, $35 an hour, you know, for 12 hour shifts. You know, that's in my mind, that's, that's a pretty good wage to just watch TV. Right. Not that you watch much TV. <laughs> right. Right. But, <laughs> but my point is, is it just kind of turns into, those are the things that are available, but you know, I've had some gigs where, I go and make sure nothing happens at a tire plant for somebody or something like that in middle of nowhere, Kansas. So it just kind of turns into, hey, I make 30, 35 bucks an hour for a month long just sitting in my own vehicle and keeping an eye out for some people. and Making smoke signals. Yeah, and essentially... Fishing through Facebook and making my TikTok. <laughs> Getting videos. Facebook banned. Yeah. <laughs> making my Facebook posts and my my TikToks, my Instagrams, and, you know, looking at training that mm-hmm. I'm going to go do yeah. after I get paid all this money because everything is usually taken care of. Yeah. And that's that's usually the mindset of people in, in our industry is the money that you're making, half the time you're spending in your head on where you're going to train next. Or Who am I going to go shoot with? Uh, where am I going to go get licensed? Where am I going to go get certified for this? Right. And trying to build up your repertoire until, you know, you've got, you know, pretty full briefcase uh, rather than a resume, you know, and it's, you know, it's a packed bag. Well, it's like when uh, our, one of our mentor, your and I's mentor, Eric Parker, mm-hmm. uh, when I, when I talked to you, about this industry and I know that you had some experience in this industry, but actually going to school and stuff like that. I even telling Mr. Darren that we both know, Mm -hmm. Hey, this job is literally, if you, you, you need to understand that you're watching dry paint dry, probably 80% of the time, whether it be in the driver's seat of a vehicle, an office space, or even, a team house that's next door to whatever Mm -hmm. or watching closed caption TV or yeah, you're, you're taking somebody to lunch dinner, you know, you're a chauffeur, but you're also there to keep them safe. And it's really, it can be really boring, really boring. And I think that that everybody sees the movies of like, Oh, let's shoot them up. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to tell you 90% of these jobs 99%. Yeah. You're not even armed. They don't even want you to have a gun. Yep. And if you are, they don't want to see it. Yeah. They want you so concealed that, you know, it. you would probably struggle to even get to it (laughs) in a quick draw situation. Yep. Bend, (laughs) twist, turn. Nope. I saw, I saw a glint. Yeah. Like go, 
Go switch it out. Yeah, or you're fired. Yep. I seen it twice in a 12-hour time period. You're fired. Go home. Yeah. Pack your stuff. Good luck finding a flight. Yeah, reach up to that, you know, six and a half, seven foot, you know, shelf and pick that big heavy thing up. And then your shirt pulls up and it's like, oh, oh I saw it. Yeah. I know you have it. But right. now I saw it. Now you're fired. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's glorious work. Right. Uh, it pays well. Um, <laughs> and you get to travel all over the place and meet cool people. And get treated like shit. Yeah. Sometimes. I, sometimes. Sometimes. I, I, I'm not saying that all clients treat you like shit because I, I have had the luck of. I think a really, lot of people just don't really understand working. us. And so there's always this kind of um, unspoken battle going on. I'm here to protect you from yourself, essentially, in a <laughs> right, lot of ways. Right. And yeah. you want to do what you want to do, and you don't like. Uh, it's I'm restricting you right. it's in like, some degree, even though I'm probably not even restricting you. I'm just saying, hey, I know that I can go around the corner mm -hmm. and drop you off to this spot, but that's not a sound way to go because there's a bunch of paparazzi over here. Right. So I want to drop you off in the back. Well, it's, it's like that Alec Baldwin incident, right? So after that happened, uh, one of the uh, protector forums that we're in, somebody was talking about how, you know, they work a lot of movie sets and they get a lot of guff for uh, not uh, allowing their principal, the person they're protecting, uh, to handle the firearm uh, first. They take that firearm from the uh, from the handler, uh, the the armorer, right, and then they check it, right, before handing it to their principal, and they do that to you know the grimace and the groans and the moans of everyone else because it's taking an extra thirty seconds, you know, before you know they can shoot a scene, but he's making he or she is making sure that they're not being handed a hot gun, you know, and so. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into well, why yeah. we're unpopular, but why we're necessary. Right. I mean, I mean, those who are preaching, you know, oh, we don't want you to have guns, but they're protected by people with guns. You know what I mean? There's, we're a necessary evil. And, and as sad as that is, I mean, that's the truth. Yeah. Uh, you know what? The, the president or a member of Congress, uh, you know, someone from, you know, a state, uh, you know, representative of some sort uh, within their own legislature or a governor, they can say whatever they want about guns, but standing within three feet of them is somebody with a gun whose job it is to protect them. Right. You know, so, um, so that's executive protection <laughs> in, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, there's, there's a lot of things like, a lot of people think, oh, you know, they got a team of guys. No, <laughs> we're expensive mm -hmm. because not only do they have to think about, I got to pay, you know, somebody who thinks, oh, I want, I want a four man, five man detail. Right. Okay. Now I got to pay all four or five of those guys. Right. I gotta You're paying insurance. the overhead. <laughs> yeah. I got to pay for insurance for it. I got to, you know, you for a big team of people, you have to be very wealthy. Travel, very food, very wealthy hotels, yeah. you take rental care of cars, all of that. That's mm -hmm. part of the contract. Yep. I mean, it's 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 like hiring somebody for a concert or something like that. It's like a writer, and sometimes I have seen it. Of like, these guys will have their own rooms. They won't share a room. Mm -hmm. And then when you get somebody who gets super, super like, oh, I want to feel safe all the time, that's 24 care. Yeah. So now your four-man or five-man team turns into an eight- or ten-man team. At least. Yeah, because you, you have to be able to rotate people out not only you know, food, for, for shifts, sleeping. but they have to have days off. They have to have, be well, able to go home and yeah. see family. Not necessarily. But, well, I mean, mm, yeah. I mean, if unless if it's a contract, a long term contract, but that's what I was thinking yeah. of. But it, it's still one of those situations of like, yeah, you have to have that rotation. 
you have to have that ability because it's not like you got to throw someone fresh in there every now and again and right a you know. fresh set of eyes and mm-hmm. then and then on top of that usually you have a team lead that yeah he's in charge of stuff but he actually doesn't do the stuff yeah. the other guys are doing he's not doing the uh, you know the halls and walls right he's off doing routes he's mm-hmm. off doing you know hey this is what's going on he's setting up you know oh we can make phone calls maybe and... the driver needs to go and wash the car they're going somewhere you know hey this is what's happening this is you know on top of the the actual protector of that client or clients you're normally maybe one or two guys and it's usually just one and you know you're responsible for all of that when you're by yourself. So uh, kind of climbing out of uh, executive protection, there's a similar but different um, close protection uh, that's uh, PSD, which is a a personal security detail. And that, that might sound, you know, uh, identical to what we just described, but a personal security detail is different. Uh, why is that? Um, well, that's a team. It's usually a team. And there's a lot of planning that goes in with that. I mean, it's, it can be from three to four guys. It can be up to 12. You know what I mean? Multiple vehicles. Um, that detail is essentially, it's a big team of guys or ladies. Um, you know, if you're a lady and you're looking to get in this industry, Money, 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 money. You're going to make some serious, serious money because women, good women as protectors are few and far between. Right. It's it's definitely something a lot of people are looking for. And therefore, um, it, when you have a, a skill set that's in high demand and you're fitting, uh, you know, somebody's, you know, albeit um, particularity, uh, you know, but you're meeting their demographic, uh, then there's, uh, there's a lot of, you know, wiggle room because there's so few of you, right. You can show up and, you know, take control of a, of an operational contract and run with it because sometimes, you know, women want to be protected by women or people want their kids protected by women or men want someone, you know, that's there that doesn't look like, a bodyguard, right? Looks like a personal assistant, right? And so, th- there's a lot of reasons why you know. There's, look, it's not pretty, but it's there's stereotypes and there's, uh, you know, these sort of broken uh, prism images of what some you know people would call like roles and things like that, and and so throwing women into the mix, it, it's a really great place to be. Because uh, just like I tell people uh, with um, uh, private investigation, some of the best private investigators I've ever seen are women because the FBI. it's the last it's the last person asking you a question that, that you really raise an eyebrow to when you're standing in line at the bank. Right. Somebody's standing behind you and strikes up a conversation in a long line. Before you know it, you've told them your whole life story on camera and microphone. <laughs> you know, and they don't even make a transaction. As soon as you walk away, they walk away, right. you know? So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely one of those things, but PSD, PSD has a little bit more of a, a threat to it. Right. It's a little higher threat. So oftentimes you see a lot of that overseas, uh, you know, shout out to all of our, our warriors who, you know, have been with Blackwater and SOC and Olive group I mean, uh, there's a bunch yeah there's, there's a bunch. tried it and you know run run the gambit in any direction you know there's a thousand names that we could mention uh, allied barton has teams you know yeah and so oftentimes when you're running that many people uh it's for a purpose because like we talked about it's incredibly expensive to have just just boots on the ground right and so if you need 10 12 people it's because you're dealing with a situation that either has way too many moving parts or active, you know, reasonable uh, threats, 
you know, that have been identified and, you know. Right. And, you know, you, you look at it and you're like, yeah, no, this is, this is legitimate. We've got death threats or bomb threats or, right. you know, we're, we're going somewhere super sketchy, like, you know, Yemen. Yeah. And that could be just because that's a PSD Shout team. out to Yemen. <laughs> Even though that's a PSD team, that's not necessarily, that's like a step down from a high threat team. Now they may do PSD things, but high threat is when we start talking high threat, we're talking guns. We're talking that's that's the the meat and potatoes of like what everybody thinks of Blackwater or you know now Canellis. Uh, well, I, I think PSD teams are more like when we're talking about like EP and we're saying like ninety ninety nine percent whatever are unarmed. PSD, you know, you're usually dealing with that higher level. Yeah, but that is still, still, I'll, I'll almost guarantee you that maybe one or two guys are armed, if, if, if that. And I, and I'm gonna say that stateside. I'm not gonna say overseas because right. that, that changes the dynamic. But I've that's never, where you I, see a lot I've of never really worked that that environment in that capacity, so I, I can't speak on that from experience but i i do know on a psd team here locally not here in st george but in salt lake i've worked a couple of teams and we could not even though even the client was like hey i want you to be armed like we couldn't be armed because of insurance things licensing issues know, licensing issues from some guys like big bad government gets in the way whoever had the contract was not actually a resident of the state and didn't have a the proper you know a local agency to yeah, lean on yeah mm -hmm. so it turned into you know we ended up working with the sheriff's department we ended up working with you know some some other local departments because of that situation and that's that's added that's added cost and anyways we won't get into that headache and that, that <laughs> menagerie of bullshit that some of us went through and had to deal with but i mean i i when i say high threat i mean like the military contractor you know what i mean like that's that still can be considered ep stuff that that kind of falls into that psd aspect the private military threat. contractor yeah the pmc for short yeah but i i mean it's still you could still be considered part of a psd team being pmc right so yeah and there's i mean like we say there's a lot of different uh pieces to this puzzle and you know i'm really excited to be able to get out there and and see a lot of our peeps right um so especially being part of alumni that's growing so quickly oh yeah which is i love seeing this and i i mean you see guys that have sworn by other schools and then they go they become part of our alumni and they're like oh i really fucked up <laughs> i fucked up i should have started here yeah you know? but they're great guys and they have great information and they get great knowledge i'm not saying that one school is better than the other because you know they i don't know I, I, I don't, I mean, I've, I've gone to a couple of schools and, you know, for different things. Yeah. It's about who loves your boy, you know, and if somebody loves you and they feel connected to you, there's a camaraderie, people will bend over backwards to make something happen for you. Right. If I climbed on, you know, our, uh, select few page and, you know, made an ask, you know, somebody would pipe up. They'd either give me the direction of where I need to go or they'd reach into their own pocket and, and produce an answer, you know, that would, uh, that would get me through that door. So no, I, I love, uh, I, I love networking. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an extrovert that has to introvert immediately afterward. And for a while, <laughs> <laughs> after but, this, uh, after this, we will be burned out. Like pro probably three days of networking. I mean, the only lucky thing that I have going on for me is that I have class mm -hmm. on Thursday night and then I'll come right back after class. Mm -hmm. 
and then I have to go back to class on Saturday morning at eight o'clock in the morning. I know I'm going to be, it'll be, I probably won't even drink while we're there because I've sworn to myself that I'm not going to drink for a while, but it will be like I'm hungover, like straight up hungover just from the interaction. Oh yeah. I'm and it's far more, you're, you're kind of jet lagging yourself going back and forth time zones and skip and right. sleep and. Yeah, it'd be like one of our transports where <laughs> you just burn it at both oh, ends. God. So um, some of the other things we're gonna we're gonna be uh, you know seeing and learning more about while we're there uh, is the surveillance and counter surveillance community. There's always a lot of those guys oh, crawling around, yeah. you know, teaching us the the latest and greatest. Um, and then gear. I'm so <laughs> excited. It's it's like a mini. All right, shot show. Give, give me your wallet for it's 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 that. Literal, I'm here to protect you from right, yourself. Right, it's that mini shot show for our our niche. Yeah, you know what I mean, like I can probably get anything that I want, which is cool, but like I want to get into the surveillance stuff, or I want to get into how to sniff bugs. You know, we we have a really good friend. Um, of the company that does this solely for a living. Yeah. The electronic countermeasures, yeah. bug sweeping. Yeah. And, and I, I love him. He is, he is my friend. Have we, have we confirmed if he's coming? I don't know if he's coming. Okay. But if he is, I, I will be a join to the hip probably <laughs> majority of the time. Because we had to link arms and couldn't yeah, carry yeah, yeah. <laughs> But he is one of my favorite people. He is literally one of my favorite people. I love him. He's his wife is amazing as well. Yeah, great people. And, and you know, and we get we get so many great people, you know, in one stop. You know, it's it, it's a great opportunity. And so I'm excited to see you know what comes out of it, what they're talking about. One of the things I've been seeing a lot on Facebook before I got locked out and sent to Facebook jail that I'm not bitter about at all uh, is. Um, that uh, people are taking those um, uh, air uh, AirPods or air air tags. tags. Yeah. The Apple air tags and they're taking air tags and they're hiding them on cars so that they can stock people. Right. Or so that they can track track vehicles. vehicles. Yeah. So it's cheap way of uh, tracking and for, for vehicle theft and or just like, I mean, I have been, I have actually been in the last week, somebody reached out to me and was like, Hey, could you tell me or follow around my wife and tell me where she goes? I was like, bro, I'm going to do you a solid cause you're my homie. Order some air tags or go buy some air tags, put it on her car and follow it your damn self. Cause I don't want to drive all over St. George. To find out where your wife is because your wife knows who I am and it's going to look really suspicious when she sees my truck at every place that she stops. I want some money. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my point is that, you know, save yourself some money if you're trying to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at well, the same time, if you want to see if she's linking up with somebody, that's a whole different ball of wax. But yeah. you just want to know where she goes. Why don't you just ask her? <laughs> I mean, I started off the conversation like, that's a little creepy, but why don't you just ask where she goes? Like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe that's just open communication for me, but. Well, when I was uh, still a card carrying um, private investigative person, um, oftentimes what I would tell people is that if you're, you know, if you've come to me and usually we're in a coffee shop or something like that, you know, if, if you've taken the time you've researched, you know, you're showing up with, you know, money to, to put a, um, a retainer on this, you kind of already know your right. trust well, is broken, but that's the your thing suspicions. Is why, why do you, I, not to take away private investigation, but I think husbands and wives that do that. It's like they're trying to hurt themselves even more. I, they, I, they, I, I kind of feel like that. Like why, if if you already feel that way and you've talked about it and they're hemming and hawing about it. 
It's closure. You, you, I don't even. I don't. Well, it's like that's me. The thing is, is like just get out of this situation, separate yourself, and then be like, hey, here's why I left. And if they want to come clean, they can come clean. If they're not going to come clean, you don't have that fighting, that, you know, that craziness. I, yeah. That's the way I look at it, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, and then there's people like me who are, you know, low crawling on a military installation <laughs> in the middle of the night to catch, you know, an ex-girlfriend <laughs> who wasn't an ex-girlfriend at the time, you know, in some sort of nefarious act because, you know, all of my my red flags and, and, you know, all the fires and everything was burning, you know, to the ground. So no, I get it. Like some people get to a point where they want, they want answers. I want the truth. Yeah, like, but, but you can't handle right. the truth. Like you right. have to, and you get upset when you're pissed because I've taken pictures of your wife essentially banging the neighbor or whatever it is, you know what I mean? Your best friend. Mm -hmm. It's like, come on, bro. Like you had that suspicion. Why not just, you know, just be honest about it and be like, Hey, seriously, like, let's figure this out if you can't, because you know, I, I don't know. Maybe some, I just don't some people's I don't, kids, I don't, man. I don't, I don't, I don't think like most people, like I've been, I've been divorced a few times and I just leave. Like, don't get me wrong. I've been hurt because they've stepped out on me or whatever. I'm hurt, but I'm not going to sit around and be like, Oh, she's a horrible person and blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to make her life miserable. Cool. She can take care of everything and be responsible of everything. I'm just going to take the stuff that I want, which is usually my clothes and my personal effects. And I'm out. Now I get it. If you got kids and all that stuff, that's a whole different ball of wax. Yeah. It complicates life. Right. But, um, you know, I, and that's, but that's the industry that we live in, you know, and right. that's, that's how I, you know, started cutting my teeth way back when with, you know, hurting people's feelings for money. You know, I would go investigate, uh, you Drugs. know, <laughs> I, I would go to bars and clubs and stuff. And, uh, I, I was working for a, uh, uh, a law firm uh, that had a contract with the UFC and I'd go around and I'd, I'd watch the UFC fights at bars and clubs that weren't paying the commercial fees, you know, and then take a couple of pictures and videos and some notes and some other things and submit an affidavit and they'd get sued for, you know, tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, you know, for pirating uh, copyrighted materials. Right. And, you know, I, <laughs> I'd make, you know, 400 bucks a pop, 450 bucks a pop, uh, depending on the event. And, you know, I got that itch. I was like, yeah, like, mm. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, it's just, um, it, it's just a fact of life. There are people who want to know, there are people that don't want to know and they, you know, and, and there, then there's all sorts of different reasons why we exist for all the different, you know, facets. I mean, you and I were, um, we went out to Tulsa, you know, for, for an EP gig, uh, for the, um, that YouTuber and, you know, we'd gone oh, out okay. there. Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. Sorry. I, I, How many Tulsas are there? There's a Tulsa, Arizona. Oh, yeah, nobody cares about Tulsa, Arizona. Uh, that's why I was Tulsa, uh, Oklahoma was... is like when you say Tulsa, like people know what people know what y'all know what Tulsa is, okay? Or quit it with you. <laughs> it's like it's like if I said Paris and you're like, you're talking about Paris, Texas? No, Paris, bitch. <laughs> I'm talking about Paris, France. You dickhead. No, but I, I, <laughs> I, I no, I wouldn't actually. I wouldn't think about Paris because I, I wouldn't go to. Fr Correction. Correction. <laughs> I would go to Paris. Correction. Let me make that very clear. I would go. <laughs> for the right money. How, however, yeah, I will do very... You would go to Mongolia yeah, to a village. I know. Yeah, I, come on. I, I have a very... You'd watch a herd on the Scottish Isles I would. while it rained the whole time. I would. I would. I, and you're watching yeah. sheep eat. Like, right. you don't care. I don't. It's money. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I'll even, I, I have a, 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 
weird sense of morality sometimes with money. Well, we were telling uh, we were telling Joshy boy that one time as as he was coming through St. George, oh, yeah, his and, boys. He, <laughs> and he had his friends with him. Yeah. And I like leaned in really hard on them as we were talking yeah. about like, yeah, we do like, you know, we do some pretty Thanks. wild stuff for money. Thanks. And I would do just about anything for money. For I money. would do just about anything for money. And I like really, right, really like hard. underlined it like, just so you know, like I'm up for it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the look on their faces was like, are the, are the, are they for real? And Josh, he's over there laughing like he's like, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah he'll yeah. do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's. He wouldn't even bat an eye. He'd probably laugh about it and tell you a story about how it happened. Like, yeah, you want to know how he's got these scars? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I don't. I don't. <sighs> Long pause. Uh, you I don't I, what? I'm I'm trying to say something without saying something too off the wall. Like I don't want somebody to get this idea of like, I would go commit like estranged murder just to commit murder. Like I'd have to have a legitimate reason. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean like, like there, there's was, legal it, bounds that, I mean, we can't right, cross over right, because right. It, doing just, so compromises everything we've worked so hard for. But within reason, like the uh, rules can bend and, you know, statutes are, you know, read different ways in court and there's precedents and all sorts of stuff. Right. There's but, wiggle room is what I'm saying. Right. But I mean, if it came down to you had hard proof and you could show me hard proof that, you know, there was a specific pedophile or something like that that was doing things <laughs> don't you get on your pedophile rant right right that's how we get thrown right, off of all of our right, social media right, platforms no, I, know, I know and I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna say but i mean you know they they could easily wake up like the mob used to do with with horse heads in their beds no like, you see and you can't say that because that that's going to be drug into court later <laughs> and they're going to play episode 14 <laughs> of oppositional forces and the is this you in this episode I, I and they know. played like the first yeah, five minutes yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah I, because you know i would i would do it with a smile yes I, and their head would also be on a pig pole two days later in the front yard no, le- le- legal, no, le- no, legal no, disclaimer. No, we don't no, no. we don't hurt people. No, we kill them that are pedophiles. No. Yes. No. I do. Oh, uh, <laughs> if you are saving, <laughs> welcome, look, welcome to the smoke pit. This is this is a Marine Corps smoke pit, right? Yeah. Here. It's it's also you know the 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 drag this out in front of everybody, you know there I, has to if be. There was a string of murders of pedophiles. If there was literally a string of murders of pedophiles and their heads were on pig poles, who would be number one person? Well, you now because you just were like. Whatever. It would be that way anyways because <laughs> the minute it hit the news, it would be like, oh, shit. Fucking Mr. Frost lost his shit. Mm. Just like lost his shit. And everybody knows it. And I know that. Like, I, I mean, I've even had cops say, hey, bro. Like we get it, but you know, tone, tone, tone it down a little bit. Yeah. Because there's, there's, there's legal. Right. Right. And I agree. I agree with you 100%. And I'm not saying this is what I do in my off time for fun because it's not, it's really not. I mean, because there's nothing fun at the end of the day about people who are being like wickedly victimized. Right. Um, now, that there's a big difference between if I'm you, the act. you walked in the room oh. and you were saving someone oh. that you were certain, you know, yes. was in, you know, uh, at being, risk of great bodily harm or death. Right. Or being victimized. Oh, that's, that's like a wet dream. But, but I'm, I'm also not going out and looking for it either. Right. I, I'm going to be very honest. We got shit that. to do. Right. I'm not bad. And I'm, man, and I'm not. And we bad. have people who work on this stuff like Eros, you know, and, um, <sighs> and right. We have and his organization, friends, yeah. like, you know, there, there's all of these different things, right. They're doing great that are things. geared towards They're doing great things. They're just not working at, at the appropriate speed for me. And, 
and because that's near and dear to my heart, and we all know that. Yes. But at the same time, they are doing great things, and they are bringing justice. And One person at a time. Right. I get it, but it needs to be multiple, and they shouldn't, you know. A pit bull can be a perfect time to bring up a meme that I just saw. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I'm off Facebook. I know. <laughs> but if a dog can be bit de- put down for biting a human... A pedophile should be put down for hurting a child. That is my 100% stance. I don't care if somebody thinks you can be rehabilitated. You cannot be rehabilitated from that. And you won't be. Because that child won't be rehabilitated from that trauma. I know. Trust me. It's part of the reason why I am the way I am. Anyhow, without getting into that negative cycle and then need to don't get all sexual uh, chocolate on me don't start moaning into the microphone uh, anyways so so yeah like like getting back to what the fuck we're talking about here (laughs) we're going to a conference with a bunch of people that are badasses and guess what guess what we're gonna do what we're gonna talk to some of those badasses and we're gonna share them with you yeah, we do. We do have some interviews lined up, um, and I'm really excited to be able to bring some of them to you. I don't know if we want them to listen to this episode before they decide to come on. <laughs> so. Shut your mouth! Shut your mouth! It, I will tell you. There's there are there's legal two, liabilities. There, there, there are one or two of those people that feel the successful exact, wealthy people right. trying to maintain their yeah, good name. They, they <laughs> are, but they know exactly and have that same stance. Well, I mean, I can't talk for anybody in particular, uh, but I know that the average individual is vehemently against uh, child predators and sex predators. And agreed. So I think, I think we can, I think we can agree on that. So maybe not how they're dealt with. Yeah. You know, (sighs) we have a justice system for a reason that we have to use. Quit growling at me. I'll fucking bite you. (laughs) Ooh. (laughs) Threaten me with a good time. Oh man. Uh, sorry, sorry. Okay. All right. Now that we're done weirding everybody out, uh, okay. why don't we uh, blow the door and get the hell out of here? Thanks, everybody. Oh. All right. Big shout out to our executive producer, Tom Larson. And yeah, yeah, yeah. and thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, we are really trying to get a push out there right now for the listenership. If you have stuck with us this long, thank you so much. We love you. We appreciate you. Uh, Please like share, leave reviews, climb onto like the different, you know, streaming venues uh, where people get podcasts, leave likes and reviews and everything there. If it's not in your wheelhouse, in your wheelhouse and you listened and you're like, ah, that's not my thing. But you know somebody? Patreon, five yeah. bucks a month. Like, pay me because you won't listen. <laughs> right. I told my sister-in-law that today. Uh, I, she'd come over to uh, to take her lunch break over at my place, uh, and she was sitting there eating, and I was, like, uh, uploading the, the previous episode. Yeah. And she said uh, something about, like, yeah, maybe, maybe I haven't listened just yet. <laughs> and I was like, I know you don't listen to the show, <laughs> but you know what? Like you can throw ten bucks a month on the Patreon, <laughs> and all is forgiven. And she's like, mm, okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, 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 I just want to throw that out there. It's like if it's not in your wheelhouse, I respect that. I totally do. But if you know somebody, just just share it. Yeah. Know? If you know other unhinged, psychological defected <laughs> individuals, hey, who hey, enjoy, I'm clinically diagnosed. I'm talking about myself. The, the narcissism in that comment. I'm allowed to talk about myself in the third. <laughs> you are a narcissist, <laughs> anyways. But uh, now you're talking in the third. <laughs> but uh, this recruit doesn't know. If if you will push us out there, help us get in front of people. Look, I'm on a 60 day ban. <laughs> which means uh, our op for Facebook 
uh, is in a 60 day ban. I can't advertise. I can't boost posts. I can't even make posts. So if you guys can, and you're listening to the show, um, even if it's not your bag, maybe, you know, somebody that's like, eh, you know what, this is probably their bag. Like, Hey, help us out. Climb onto Patreon. Uh, it's patreon.com forward slash oppositional forces. You can go on our website, badguyforhire.com, and all the links are there. Uh, you can hit the different tabs and you'll see everything. Everything's right there for you. So get on there, push us out there, leave us some reviews, boast about us to your friends on your social media pages. Like uh, we, we've gone out of our way to be there for everybody else. I know I have, I know Mr. Frost has like we're, we're out there trying to make this, this thing a thing and we're, you know, throwing big money at these conferences and, you know, we've got, you know, time and gear and, you know, all sorts of different things, you know, but, uh, if you would help us with that, that's what I want for Christmas. That's what Mr. Frost wants for Christmas and subsequently his birthday a few days later. Help us. Help us. Please. Please and thank you. I'll I'll bring. I will smoke a brisket for you if you can just get, you know, some people down on this. And just so you're aware, I smoke brisket for 24 consecutive hours. It is the most delicious thing you have ever eaten bar none mm, you, uh, your brisket is bomb i will say that but i'm armed before you finish that sentence okay <laughs> <laughs> what what what's better i'm not saying anything's better but i mean in this area i will say your brisket is the best i will say that I will wow say, I, I will say that and i'm gonna say that because Everybody has their own idea of what's best and of what's what brisket not. is, and you got to have a big, thick bark blah, on blah, it. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. I, but I will 24 say hour that, smoke, yeah, bite me. But it's still delicious. Tender, flavorful. However, your ribs need some work compared to our turros. Just saying. <laughs> uh, our, our turro <laughs> fucked you up. He <laughs> fucked you up. All right. You know what? Uh, hey, 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 before we go. Shout out to Mr. Scotty Hatfield. I appreciate you, brother. You and your family and that beautiful new baby of yours. You hooked me up with a very dapper haircut today. Little Scotty. And and, and that's the barber collective, right, by the way, right. that we and shout a, so much and about. A, and a good beard trim. Um, I just want to shout that out and be like, hey, bro, you're spot on. You, I, I'm looking pretty barnyard pimping over here. Do you look good? And he he is going off a of very little sleep because he has a new baby at a home. New baby at home, and he still hooked it up. So I'm very proud of you, brother. I love you. I love you. <sighs> <laughs> All right, everybody, out. Thank you for listening to Oppositional Forces, Wage War, and Stack Bodies. 